The history and geography of the Oklahoma Panhandle are fascinating. Learning about this narrowly populated strip of land helps us understand America as a whole, teaches us about the past, and gives us a glimpse into our future. My name is Jeff Bell, and I have an affinity for the desolate plains, stark natural beauty, and photogenic towns of the Panhandle. In this video, we will examine five interesting and important places, and you may never look at this rectangle of land the same again. We will start with the southern border of the Panhandle, the 36th parallel, which may sound familiar if you paid attention during American history in high school. Have you ever wondered why this land belongs to Oklahoma and not Texas? Like many things in American history, it comes down to one word, slavery. But I'll try to give you a slightly more detailed answer and summarize this complex history in two minutes. Back in the early 1800s, Missouri wanted to join the Union as a slave state, but the northern states said no. But Missouri already had a significant number of slave-owning landowners and had the support of the southern states. So the two sides did what people do in a democracy. They compromised and no one was happy. As part of the Missouri Compromise of 1820, Congress allowed Missouri to join as a slave state and Maine to join as a free state. In addition, the compromise prohibited slavery north of the 36th parallel in the future. 25 years later, Texas won independence from Mexico and wanted to join the U.S. However, there was one small problem. The chimney of Texas in the northwest part of the state extended well beyond the 36th parallel and into present-day Wyoming. Since Texas wanted to join as a slave state, it forfeited the land north of the 36th parallel in parts of present-day New Mexico and in 1845 became the 22nd state. As a result, the rectangle of land between Texas, New Mexico, Kansas, and the Indian Territory became a landlocked island without a government, a question mark on the map. The official name of the area was Public Land Strip, but most people called it No Man's Land, which we can all agree is a badass name for a Wild West Territory. Aside from the punk rock name, the land was indeed some man's land for centuries, as nomadic Native American tribes had lived there for 10,000 years, but I digress. In 1885, Interior Secretary LQC Lamar declared the strip of land public domain subject to squatter's rights. News of free land spread quickly, and farmers and ranchers flooded the strip. In 1890, the Organic Act assigned the land to Oklahoma Territory, and the days of anarchy were over. The eastern border of the Panhandle, which is the 100th Meridian, is also a big deal for two reasons. First, in 1878, naturalist John Wesley Powell noticed a dramatic change as he traveled through the plains from east to west, and he popularized the idea of the 100th Meridian being a dividing line between the relatively moist east and the drier west. The eastern edge of the Panhandle also marks the divide between the Great Plains and the High Plains, and as you cross into the area, you can notice the difference. The area around the 100th Meridian in Oklahoma is absolutely beautiful, with rolling hills covered in short grass prairie, sagebrush, cactus, and yucca plants, a noticeable change from the Great Plains, which have more trees and tall grass prairie. Scientists warn that the dry line is moving east due to climate change and could have dire consequences for our nation's food supply. As less rain falls in America's heartland, farmers will have to rely more on vanishing groundwater reserves, which brings us to the third fascinating place in the Panhandle, the Ogallala Aquifer. Although there are no natural lakes and rivers sometimes run dry, the Panhandle and Greater High Plains region have trillions of gallons of fresh water, but you won't see any of it. Underneath the High Plains is the Ogallala Aquifer. This vital water source has allowed people to settle in this inhospitable region. Early settlers dug wells and used windmills to extract water. But since World War II, farmers have used diesel pumps to draw billions of gallons of water from the ground for irrigation, household, and industrial use. In the Oklahoma Panhandle, the aquifer supplies 98% of the water and it's being depleted at an alarming rate. Since the 1950s, the aquifer near Guyman, the largest town in the Panhandle, dropped 70 feet and the groundwater depletion is the reason Optima Lake is dry. Just outside of Hardesty, the Army Corps of Engineers finished building a $46 million dam in 1977, but it never filled with water, a scary harbinger for the future of the West. Managing this water supply is vital for the future of the Panhandle and especially for the greater region, where the situation is more dire. In the Texas Panhandle, the water level has dropped over 150 feet in some areas. The population is declining in most High Plains states, but not in West Texas, where cities such as Amarillo and Lubbock are growing. What will the future of these cities look like when the taps run dry? The High Plains are a major wheat, corn, and cattle producing region. A healthy Ogala aquifer is essential for the future of our country. 
Okay, all this talk of environmental catastrophe has got me down. Let's look at my favorite place in the Panhandle, Black Mesa. On the far western edge of the Panhandle, the High Plains transition to the Rocky Mountains. The rugged mesas and rocky buttes of the Three Borders area are remnants of ancient lava flows from volcanoes in present-day New Mexico and Colorado. The area has a mysterious Wild West vibe, and it's stunningly beautiful. The area has black bears, bighorn, mountain lions, mule deer, and pronghorn. Animals usually associated with the Rocky Mountains and not the plains. 70 million years ago, or 5,000 years ago depending on your sources, dinosaurs roamed the panhandle. You can see the fossilized dinosaur prints at Black Mesa State Park, which are a little underwhelming, I'm not gonna lie, but it's still really cool when you think about it. Black Mesa is a dark sky park, ideal for stargazing since there is almost no light pollution. And there's no light pollution since virtually no one lives out there. That brings us to our next point about human geography. Although the Panhandle makes up 8% of the land in Oklahoma, it has less than 1% of the population. In fact, less than 1% of all Americans live in this broader region, although it takes up 10% of the country. The High Plains are a challenging place to live. Farmers and ranchers deal with severe drought, howling winds, seasonal floods, freak hailstorms, late freezes, and blazing hot summers, sometimes all on the same day. The highest recorded temperature at Black Mesa is 109 degrees, with the low at minus 18. That's one of the most extreme differences you'll find anywhere on Earth. All the Okies watching this video are nodding in agreement, thinking, yeah, that seems about right. Although not many people live in the High Plains or the Panhandle, there is one town in Oklahoma that is booming, and that is Gaiman, a place revitalized by immigration. Gaiman is a hog farming and feedlot mecca, and migrants from all over the world have moved to this city in the center of the Panhandle. An estimated 37 languages are spoken in Gaiman, and the myriad tongues pose a challenge for city officials. Nearly 33% of the population is from outside the United States, and is the only town in Oklahoma where the majority of the people are Hispanic. From 1990 to 2020, Gaiman's population grew by 63%. This stands in sharp contrast to most towns in the region, which have experienced a population decline of around 20% during that time. When I went to Gaiman recently, I noticed most of the signs were only in Spanish, and it kind of looks like an alternate universe where Mexico won the war with Texas. Immigration has clearly rejuvenated Gaiman, which is busy and bustling compared to the other towns in the region. Is Gaiman a glimpse into America's future, and does it offer a roadmap to save rural America? Oklahoma currently has an unprecedented teacher shortage and issued nearly 4,000 emergency teacher licenses for the 2023 school year. Oklahoma also has a major shortage of doctors, nurses, and mental health care professionals. Nearly 65% of rural towns in America don't have enough health care workers. Attracting skilled professionals from overseas could fill these shortages and breathe life into these communities. In addition to Gaiman, you'll also find the photogenic towns of Beaver and Gate in the Panhandle. Two places I ranked in my top 10 most photogenic towns in Oklahoma. 